Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and this is episode 45 on April 3rd, recorded on April 3rd. You can see all of our episodes, as it says on the screen, at uh, my blog, walkinpark.com, including episode 43, where we started off the story of a Blue Ridge Road Trip on the Blue Ridge Parkway last June. And we're going to resume that story today with part two. We'll finish it off. In uh, episode 43, we went from Ithaca to the Blue Ridge Parkway and down the Blue Ridge Parkway to a place called Peak Savada, a really beautiful place north of Roanoke. And um, today we're going to continue from there down all the way into North Carolina and the, uh, the Black Mountains and Mount Mitchell, the highest mountain in eastern North America. So uh, let's check that out. We're going to uh, go right to it because it's a, it's a long video. And so I'll put us on our home screen. And there we go. Well, here I am in Cumberland Knob, which is a picnic area just off the Blue Ridge Parkway, just into North Carolina. So uh, it's taken me a few days to get here. I was at uh, three nights at Peaks of Otter. So um, yesterday um, was, um, that would have been Monday, um, I think what, the 18th, right after the day after Father's Day, which was the day that I went up Peaks of Otter. Um, uh, it was a rainy day and uh, lots of electrical storms and heavy, heavy rain and so forth. So I moved down the parkway some and, and I had to go into Roanoke and do some shopping and get some stuff. So now I want to head on today. I want to make a lot more progress and go on to um, Julian Price Memorial Park. It's a, a part of the Blue Ridge Parkway and has a campground. And I will uh, stay overnight there tomorrow morning. I hope to go to uh, Grandfather Mountain and look that over. It. So uh, what have I done since the last time I sat down um, and spoke? Um, well, I went to Linville Falls, Linville Gorge, uh, which is just oh, maybe 40 miles north of here, which is a, um, a river, Linville River, uh, flows off the eastern side of the Blue Ridge and down into the Piedmont and the lowlands. And uh, it's quite a nice gorge. Um, it's uh, beautiful. It's got some falls by, by Finger Lake standards. They're, they're nothing spectacular, but definitely lovely place. 
Um, one thing you see in the um, photographs is, uh, or, or at the scene, is that a lot of dead trees, and those are hemlocks, were killed by the hemlock woolly adelgid, which is now invading the Finger Lakes, and it uh, threatens to wipe out most of our hemlock trees. Uh, through very labor-intensive and expensive methods, you can save some trees, but the vast majority are going to succumb, at least in the short term. I'm sitting on a wet log in mossy woods up in the fir forest on the top of Mount Mitchell, which is the tallest mountain in the eastern North America, east of the Mississippi, eastern U.S., eastern Canada, anything. And it's in the Black Mountains in uh, Mount Mitchell State Park, which is a, the Black Mountains are a short spur, only about 15 miles long of a range, it's a range of mountains that um, juts off the Blue Ridge, and so it's right off the Blue Ridge Parkway, and uh, this has been one of my goals, is to get here. I was here in the early 1960s, almost 50 years ago, with my parents and a friend when we went on a uh, camping trip to the Smokies and down the Blue Ridge Parkway, so it's kind of fun to go back, and I called my mom and told her that's where we were, and she was tickled. In any case, uh, we're up here, the uh, elevation is 6,684 feet. And the second highest peak in North America, in eastern North America, is this direction. There's a trail behind me, actually, called Deep Gap Trail. It's called Mount Craig. I don't know exactly what the elevation is, but I used to think that Klingman's Dome in uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which was 6642, was the second, and I used to say that. But uh, I guess this one over here is... Uh, number two. Perhaps Klingman's is three. In any case, uh, this is nearing the end of my journey down the Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm not going to go all the way to the Smokies. Uh, this, was, uh, this is as good as the Smokies, and uh, the mountain is uh, quite smoky today, actually. there was uh, uh, it's, it's a bright, sunny day with white, puffy clouds, but uh, air moving up the, I guess it would be probably the north side of the mountain, uh, has been pushing up and then cooling off and condensing and creating clouds that are just on the north side, but the south side and west side look fine in terms of being able to see, and it's all beautiful. So, as you can see in some of my photographs, the Fraser fir, which is, a, I guess, a variety of, uh, it was like balsam fir, uh, much of it or most of it was killed by the, the uh, balsam woolly adelgid, another aphid-like insect, uh, maybe 25 years ago. I understand that um, young Fraser firs are coming up, and I guess that's what's around us here. Um, whether they will survive to large size is unknown. If maybe the balsam woolly adelgid will come back and, and kill these. Um, so we don't know whether we'll have big old fir trees. I'm sure they've saved some of them for the important ones in public areas, but um, I think not in this uh, spot right here. There's a lot of young stuff that's come up and it's competing with each other. But I don't really know. Um, anyway, it's real neat to be here. I see a lot of plants, mosses. I see um, little oxalis here, which is a, a um, clover-like plant. 
that uh, grows up in uh, the uh, spruce and fir forests of the Adirondacks in, in the Catskill Mountains and up in New England. So it's neat to see it here. And I've heard uh, winter wrens, which uh, are really a kind of a northern species like the um, um, conifer forests. You hear them in our gorges, some in the Finger Lakes, but also up in the Adirondacks. And I've heard them in the Smokies, and here they are on uh, Mount Mitchell. And uh, you know, they're pretty common. And they have a long twittering song, very musical, and uh, I really love them. Uh, so soon I will begin my uh, journey back towards home in the Finger Lakes. Um, probably use pieces of the Blue Ridge Parkway, but um, probably go uh, quickly uh, by other routes. And it's been uh, quite a trip. I'm sure I'll say I have some other things to say about it.
Good morning. I am on um, Rocky Knob, Rocky Knob Campground in Virginia, just north of Maybury's Mill, south of Roanoke. On my way headed north again. Uh, actually, yesterday I, uh, I traveled from uh, uh, the Linville Falls area where I was staying, actually, at a friend's house. And um, uh, I've been on the parkway the whole time, and I will, for the first half of today, be on the parkway. And then I'll go off and stay with friends at my old Shannon Farm again. So uh, I'm going to take it leisurely today. I don't have terribly far to go, maybe 150 miles, but uh, it goes slow on the parkway. So uh, actually, and then you have to, of course, whenever you're driving, you have to have a you know, extreme vigilance, but uh, with a two-lane road and virtually no shoulder and, and um, twists and turns and hills and what they call spiral curves, which you're going down a curve, but you're also descending, which is kind of interesting. Um, it uh, really is kind of tiring, but you got to take your time. It's a whole lesson in patience in realizing you're not trying to get somewhere, you're trying to go, you're trying to be on this route. And that's what it's all about. And if you get behind somebody that's going more slowly, hey, you know, that's cool. That's what this road's about. You want to go fast, you go down the bottom of the hill and go on a quick road. But, uh, you know, I've had some reflections on uh, this uh, road trip uh, stuff, uh, uh, camping and uh, tent and traveling, and um, kind of hard to do both at the same time, especially as you get older. Uh, there's so many details. You know, we go camping to uh, simplify life, I guess, you know, it's to make life more simple. Actually, it makes it a lot more complicated because of the planning and the thought that has to go into uh, every little detail of life is just horrendous. I must have, spent, must have spent two weeks gathering together all the things I needed for this trip. You know, I got them in my car. I'm a living out of my car. And... Um, Everything is in their little bin and their bag and, and, and tucked away this place in the glove compartment and inside the suitcases where I keep, you know, this, that, and the other. Where is it all? And I spent the first few days of the trip uh, tearing my hair. Where did I put this? Where did I put that? Uh, I moved it somewhere else. It's no longer in the bag that I put it in when I packed up. And uh, just uh, not relaxing at all. So uh, I'm getting more into the groove now and got my system down and I have uh, things uh, where they, you know, they make sense and together and that sort of thing or, they're, or I know the possibilities of where things are much better so I don't get so frustrated so it's a little easier but still all the packing and the, the unpacking and the setting up the tent and putting all the stuff in the tent at night and then uh, packing it all up in the morning and taking it out to the car and sometimes your campsite uh, where you have your car is up a slope it's not right next to the picnic table or the tent site and so you're going up and down the hill with bins and back and forth and so oh my gosh I forgot this and I go back up to the car and it's exhausting it takes hours to get get yourself together in the morning and uh, uh, so <laughs> has it been that relaxing but um, so I wouldn't say camping at least car camping oh backpacking too is canoe camping that's all has its same sort of problems that way um, not quite as complicated but uh, in terms of where all the stuff you have and where it is it's more limited where things are going to be but uh, even still the the amount of time you spend dealing with the daily little details of life are are is uh, enormous and um, you don't have time for anything else you know you're you're either traveling or you're um, doing all these little details, these things that uh, are much more convenient at home or in a motel, in a restaurant, or other people do things for you. Uh, so um, it's not simplification, it's actually more complex, it's just different. And I'd say that one of the advantages, big, well, there's an obvious advantage of car camping is uh, it's cheaper. I've spent I spent an $8 a night with my senior pass in the national parks at uh, $16 a site, tent site, and I cut that in half, it's 8 bucks a night. That's not bad, I'm not spending virtually nothing on on uh, lodging except for a couple of motels on this trip. 
Uh, but the other thing is it's, it's more elemental. It's not, it's not simpler, but it's more elemental. It puts you out here in nature, puts you on the mountain, in the woods, uh, by the gorge, wherever it is, uh, in the desert, in the canyon, whatever it is, uh, you're there, you're right in it, and you can't get any closer to it. And uh, that's, that's really special, that's really wonderful. Um, but it also puts you in the elements in the sense that it's cold or it's hot or it's windy or particularly if it's raining. So uh, you're immersed in that as well, which isn't necessarily bad if you're well prepared and and uh, uh, have a mind to deal with that. And actually, I haven't been hot because up in the mountains here, it, even though it's been in the 90s in the lowlands, uh, it's in the 60s and 70s and maybe low 80s in the mountains. And so that's, it's really been, the weather's been quite pleasant. I've only had a couple of rainy days. You know, one of the uh, weird things about um, driving along here is you're, you're, uh, you feel like you're just driving through the countryside, and rolling hills and you know, occasional farm and, and um, trees and fields and what have you. And, uh, and every once in a while you get a view at an overlook and uh, you're actually way up on a mountain, two, three thousand feet above the valley, maybe sometimes four thousand feet above the valley if you're down in North Carolina. And uh, but you can after a while you can get you know in the in the gentler sections where you're not actually on the edge of the mountain, like where I'm going here. This, this is in uh, southern Virginia. This is like uh, oh I don't can't tell I'm in the mountains till I come to an overlook. Then I see the ridges drop away down to deep valleys. And, and, uh, uh, one of the other um, difficulties of driving like this is, of course, uh, anybody knows this that drives on a street that goes in and out of the woods, is that uh, when you're, um, it's a sunny day, you're driving along and, uh, you know, it's bright, and then you go in under some trees and it's, you know, it's dark shade, and you got to hope there's not a bicyclist there or something, or a deer, and, uh, and your eyes are shifting back and forth, back and forth. The, Sunglasses, of course, make the shade darker, but it, it cuts down on the stress. You know, if without sunglasses, your eyes are adjusting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to the lighting, and that's very tiring. And uh, you can see in the shade better with uh, out sunglasses, but the the, the uh, contrast, the back and forth, is is much more stressful and tiring. So. Uh, so I take a balance if I'm if a cloud goes over the sun or if um, uh, you know I'm in a long section of shady road, I will take the sunglasses off to see better. But if it's in and out, then uh, then maybe I'll leave them on like I'm doing now. You know, I miss the, uh, the rhododendron down in North Carolina, Craggy Gardens, Catawba rhododendron, which is beautiful. It's, uh, it's a um, pink, very brilliant pink, deep pink color. But uh, there's another rhododendron that's a, a white variety, which uh, is blooming now in the Virginia Blue Ridge. And it wasn't blooming so much uh, before when I um, came down last week, that is. So uh, as I go through some of these uh, canyons of trees, or whatever you want to call them, uh, sometimes they are well decorated with this white rhododendron in full bloom. Well, yesterday I left the Blue Ridge Parkway just north of Roanoke and headed out to the east along the uh, Piedmont at the base of the mountains. That's what they call it, all along the Blue Ridge, all from 
Virginia down into North Carolina. It's called the Piedmont, the foot of the mountain. And um, it was sad. I felt like I was leaving a friend. It was so nice up there, uh, traveling along that that uh, gentle road at a you know maximum of 45 miles an hour, and and uh, not much traffic, and so beautiful up in the mountains for so many days. And uh, so yeah, I felt like I was leaving an old friend, and. Uh, Got down here and I'm back with uh, old friends again at the uh, Shannon Farm Community at the very northern edge, uh, northern end uh, area, area of the northern end of the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is here up here in Rockfish Gap, where I started out. And um, so today I will head north and go across the mountain, across Rockfish Gap, and then head north up the, the valley to the west of the Blue Ridge and back towards Pennsylvania. <music> So there we have it, the um, rest of the Blue Ridge road trip video of my trip last summer. If you want to see the whole show, um, go to episode 43 to go to walkinpark.com. You can go back. It was uh, recorded on, on March 20th. So on my blog, you can find it there. Maybe you'll see it also on channel 13 here. And uh, so thank you very much for uh, joining us for Blue Ridge road trip. Part two on Walk in the Park, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>